everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours because we are covering the oh so wonderful opossum. This is, of course, a very, very special listener episode dedicated to Kristen, Hannah, Gray, Sylvia, Juliana, and Elena. Thank you all for taking the time to write in and for such a great suggestion. I hope you enjoy your very own episode. Thank you all for taking the time to write in and for requesting such a cool animal. If you would like your very own podcast episode and to learn about a cool critter that you find interesting, you can request an animal in one of three ways. You can send a message to the Instagram Relax with Animal Facts. You can go to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and click on the Animal Request tab. And lastly, you could always email relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. I love getting all of your messages and finding out which cool creatures you want to learn about, so don't be shy and be sure to reach out. For those of you that love the show and would like more of it, along with intro-free and ad-free versions of this podcast, There is a podcast Patreon, Relax with Animal Facts. All of the tiers are exactly the same, so however much you give, which can be as little as a dollar a month, still gives you full access to series like Mythological Animals, Extinct Animals, all of the super cool series. The way to get there is in the description, or you can just go to patreon.com slash relax with animal facts. I'm just going to say where I got my facts from, and we can get straight into the episode. All of these websites are .com, Farmer's Almanac, Have a Heart, National Geographic, Mental Floss, and Etim Online. All of those resources are in the description, and this episode would not have been possible without their contributions. And now I would like for all of you to notice where you are carrying some tension. Is it in the neck, the head, the shoulders, the arms? Who knows, maybe you ran a marathon today and your legs are super sore. Regardless of what it is, in my case it is my hands as it always is, we do not really need all of that tension where we are going because we are going into the forests where the opossum resides. Now one thing is very important for us to address right from the beginning. There might be some who say, Isn't the first letter in opossum supposed to be silent? Or maybe isn't it supposed to be pronounced opossum? It seems as though it is a bit of a misconception that the first letter of opossum is supposed to be silent. Silent like, say, the K in no or knowledge. But according to our modern dictionaries, They seem to be unanimous in describing the pronunciation of this word as opossum in order to distinguish it from a creature known as possum. There is a creature with that distinction that is in Australia, and so to make sure that we know we are talking about the same creature, especially for those Australian listeners out there. So that is why I am saying opossum, as opposed to just possum. Now, in North America, the word opossum and possum are used very interchangeably and describe the same creature, and the most common or well-known opossum that we find in North America is the Virginia opossum. 
and these critters are in fact the only marsupials found north of Mexico. Now here's that word again, marsupial. If we remember, say, from the wallaby or from the kangaroo episode, we might remember what that distinction means. The opossum is a marsupial because they are mammals that carry and nurse their young in pouches. And these marsupials that are in Canada and the United States are the only representative of that marsupial group. We have no kangaroos, no wallabies. All of the cool critters are miles and miles away in Australia. So the scientific name of the opossum is Didelphide. And normally, as many of you know, we go into that scientific name a little bit more to see how apt it is. But this scientific name seems to me to be a bit confusing. That word Delphi that is smashed in there comes from the Greek word for a dolphin, and that prefix there, D, usually means that it is coming away or away from something. So the scientific name seems to imply that the opossum is away from a dolphin or far removed from a dolphin. This word also sometimes has mythic or fantastical origins, but I certainly can't figure this one out. But moving on, from their nose to their tail, they are about two and a half feet on average. They will weigh between 8.8 .8 to 13.2 pounds. That's between 4 and 6 kilograms. They will survive on an omnivorous diet, which we will dive a little bit deeper into in just a moment. But let us first cover some other things before we circle right back into this fact. I first would like to cover the fact that has made them so popular or the fact that they are most known for, and that is their ability to play dead. But I'm not sure if using the word ability is as descriptive as it should be, or even if it is a mischaracterization of this behavior. The reason I say that is because the opossum cannot choose when they play dead. When the animal experiences a very intense fear in the face of impending danger, it will seize up and flop to the ground automatically. So we cannot really attribute the effectiveness of this behavior to some kind of inherent acting ability. They do not actually have a choice to be theatrical. So when a predator gets up close and the opossum gets very fearful, it will seize up and flop onto the ground where it can stay for hours and hours staring blankly ahead with its tongue sticking out. And so I find it fascinating that Perhaps the most popular fact about this critter is slightly misunderstood by many. But regardless, this involuntary reaction serves a purpose and does it very effectively. It isn't enough, however, for the opossum to simply look dead. It will do something else also automatically to try to really sell this theatrical performance. They will release a smell that can only be described as putrid in order to feign or fake the processes of a natural decomposition. So when some creatures come by and they just take a little whiff of this opossum, chances are they will look for their dinner somewhere else. Now, when opossums are on the other side, not as prey, but rather as predators, some of their prey will also be helpless in fighting back. That is because they are mostly scavengers. They will visit human homes or settlements to go into garbage cans and containers 
they also will not turn down the roadkill or carrion that is lying around. In addition to eating grass and nuts and fruit, they will, however, also hunt mice and birds, worms, snakes, insects, and even chickens. So this is what make them not only scavengers, but omnivores. They have a tolerance for and enjoy eating nuts and fruit, but also mice and insects and birds. I would classify them as something opposite of a picky eater. If there is such a thing as being slightly too open-minded to food, the opossum would fit into that category. Now included in that insect diet that it indulges in, they are like the tick cleanup crew. They vastly slow down the spread of Lyme disease, eating about 90% of the ticks that attach themselves to them. According to the National Wildlife Federation, a single opossum on average can consume 5,000 ticks per season. So as a general rule, the more opossums that are in your area, the fewer ticks you'll encounter. That does mean you will sometimes have to forfeit your trash can as their plunder. These are the trade-offs of being tick-free with the opossum. Maybe one of the reasons why ticks have so many opportunities to land themselves onto the opossum of course, as we just learned to their utter demise, is because the opossum is a very agile creature. They will try to go anywhere and everywhere. They are world-class tree climbers with very sharp claws, opposable thumbs on their hind feet, and a tail that is prehensile that will allow them to go onto the trunks and hang onto branches. That word prehensile refers to the ability to grip. So not only do they have opposable thumbs on their hind legs, they have a fifth sort of grappling appendage with their tail. It seems that they love trees so much that they often also nest in tree hollows. Now, besides being very tough when it comes to ticks, they are also tough when it comes to snake venom. They are immune to the majority of snake venom. The only exception to this immunity is the coral snake, but to virtually every other type of snake that is found in their native range, they are totally immune. Without the sting of venom, the snake becomes a quick meal for the opossum. Let's talk about their communication. As you heard at the top of the show, they do actually make noise. You usually or likely haven't heard an opossum make noises before because they are generally quiet creatures. But they do indeed have sounds or calls that are peculiar to them. Young opossums, for example, will make sneezing sounds or a soft choo-choo sound, as if, I suppose, they were a little chugging train. And they will often make these noises when calling out to their mother. The mother will then respond not really with a choo-choo noise, but with something more of a clicking. There is also one final communication, and that is one of saying back off. When an opossum is threatened, it will sometimes hiss or growl. Now we say that they may do this because the other option sometimes is an automatic shutdown into playing dead. So I imagine that if you are hearing a hiss or a growl, it means that they are not too stressed about the situation and think they can handle it just fine. The last fact before we move on to the name portion of the episode is that they are not only omnivorous and exemplify a scavenger kind of diet, they are also nocturnal. 
To be nocturnal is to be the opposite of diurnal. Diurnal refers to creatures that are awake mostly during the daytime. They hunt and do all of the rest of those things with the sunshine and sleep at night. Nocturnal creatures will do the opposite. So the opossum will be thriving in the nighttime and sleeping mostly during the day. Now let us go to the final fact of the episode, which is the name. Where does the name opossum come from or what does it mean? So the name opossum was applied specifically to this creature around the year 1600. And it comes from an Algonquian word, opassum, which is sort of an adaptation, but is equivalent to a proto-Algonquian term that means white dog. So we can see just by looking at this critter how white dog came to be a natural distinction for them. And now let us move on to the review portion of the show. This is where I read a review from a very special listener out there. And in today's case, this review was written by Beck Trek, who wrote in all the way from the United States of America, where of course the opossum resides. And Beck Trek writes, My name is Beck and I am 23. I am from the United States and love to listen to your podcast while I am coloring at night. I'd love to learn more about dolphins. Happy trails. Happy trails to you as well, Beck. Thank you for taking the time to leave such a kind review. I am so glad that you can join me in the seas and on the mountains. We just have to make sure that when we're in the oceans, you bring maybe a Ziploc bag because coloring there might be a bit challenging. In terms of the animal suggestion, the dolphin has actually already been covered, but only in a general way. If there is a specific kind of dolphin, or even if you have another suggestion, feel free to reach out to the show. All of you, including Beck, can reach the show by sending a message to Relax With Animal Facts on Instagram by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and going to the Animal Request tab, or you could always send an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com. As a listener did last week, and as Beck did this week, I suppose you can also request your animals through reviews. That is also possible. Now, if you want to continue this trek into the forest, but perhaps to see creatures that have not been on the planet for some time, you can join me on the Extinct Animal mini-series that is currently going on on the Patreon Relax with Animal Facts. I hope to see you all there so we can continue going deeper into this forest. Thank you all for joining me for this podcast episode. I am so glad that we got to cover the opossum. I hope you will all join me on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.